My name is John Stewart. I am president of the Florida Bar, and I'm here with Justice LaBarga, who is kind enough to give us some of his time to answer some questions for us for what is going to be our first ever uh, Florida Bar annual virtual convention. So first, let me say, Justice LaBarga, I know how tight your schedule is and how busy you are, so thank you for giving us the time and, and talking with us for a few minutes today. And thank you for having me. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, to, to work with the Florida Bar. So um, we're going to you know, hit a few topics that I think are of interest to our members. And I'm going to start with the, something that, that's been talked about a lot recently. Um, you, you, I think, were on the early part of this curve. You, when you were Chief Justice, established a Supreme Court Commission on Access to Civil Justice. And uh, you know, now we talk about it all the time. We weren't really talking about it quite as much uh, when you established it. So you were certainly ahead of the curve. But you know, just wanted to get your idea, a couple of points on, on that. You know, do you think that's a newer phenomenon? Do you think it's always existed? You know, uh, do you think we're just hearing about it more now? I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, maybe about why you established it and kind of where we are today with those issues. Uh, first of all, establishing the uh, the Access Commission along with then President uh, Greg Coleman and then President elect Ray Aberdeen and and working with uh, with with Jack. Harkness, uh, the executive director of the bar at the time, was one of the uh, proudest moments of my moment, of my of my career. Of my, my career, uh, the the barriers to civil justice uh, is it, not a new problem, uh, but there there are constructive ways to look at this from a different angle. Uh, the Access Commission was fortunate to hear from Jim Sandman. He is the president of the uh, National Legal Services Corporation and a good friend to me and one of the biggest advocates uh, for access to civil justice in the entire country. He said a few things during the commission meeting the last time uh, that we had one uh, that I thought were really great. First, he said, the biggest problem faced with legal aid is the fact that people do not know about the problem. He called it the invisible issue. And I think that's correct. And, and it's not a small thing to raise the visibility of the issue, but I think the, our commission has done just that. Uh, more than that, we raised the visibility of the solutions by creating the Council of Business Partners, creating the Florida Courts Help app to put in one place all the resources available to self-represented litigants, serving as a hub, if you will, uh, for the Florida Bar Foundation and all the groups that help people with access to justice. So we've been busy. Uh, the problems obviously have been magnified by, by this virus that we're dealing with now, but uh, we're working on it. Well, you've identified a lot of, a lot of great uh, solutions that you've already come up with. Um, I know that there's more that you all are talking about. I know at the board we've been talking about an advanced Florida registered paralegal program that has been batted about by the commission and just ideas. I mean, no, no, nothing concrete. And I know there's many more that you all have. So, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, appreciate one that, that you had the foresight to establishment and to establish the commission and two um, that, you know, that you all continue to reach out to the bar. I know the commission is full of uh, extremely highly qualified uh, uh, people from all sectors, which I think was brilliant on your part in the establishment. I mean, it's not just lawyers, it's business people and, and people from all uh, walks of life. So it's been a tremendous uh, success. Uh, you know, I think one of the interesting parts, you and I have had a chance to talk uh, quite a few times, and I think one of the interesting parts of your career, which maybe a lot of people don't know, is that you were a circuit judge uh, you know, back in uh, the, the Bush v. Gore when that first came out. And so, um, you know, we, I'm not asking anything political. I know we have an election year coming up, but this isn't political. I just am, I think people would be interested to hear about, you know, what you thought about that case, you know, having to preside over it, maybe something interesting that, uh, a takeaway that you had from it. I mean, obviously it was an unbelievable landmark case um, at a trial level. And then of course at the Supreme Court level, and you were certainly there. So love to hear uh, some of your thoughts about it. Well, just, just mentioning Bush v. Gore, you have just ruined 20 years of therapy for me. <laughs> uh, but, but let me just, uh, I, I remember 
the night before that election, uh, my wife and I were watching the results late at night on the television, and she was falling asleep, and she told me, wake me up when they announce the winner. And I woke her up, and sure enough, told her, and they just announced that, uh, that, that, uh, that Al Gore was the winner, or the Bush was the winner. I'm sorry, it was uh, W was the winner. And so we went to sleep. The next morning, uh, I'm watching the Today Show as I'm getting dressed to go to work, and I'm hearing Katie Couric on the Today Show announce that it's up in the air, and there's a problem with the votes, and it is in Palm Beach County, and that it will be decided by a Palm Beach County judge. My wife and I immediately looked at each other, and I said, there's 12 judges in the civil, civil division. I got one chance in 12. What are the odds? So I went to lunch that morning with some friends to celebrate the fact that we have not gotten the case. <laughs> Came back for lunch to hear that the chief judge wanted to see me. So I went to see Chief Judge Colbath. It was Wally Colbath, Jeff's father. Uh, he says, George, uh, the case has been assigned now uh, to six different judges. They have all recused themselves and you're next. So are you going to punt or are you going to keep the case? So I told him, I'll keep it. And I walked into the courtroom and there was Barry Richards on one side representing one, one side and there was David Boyce on the other side. And I looked at the camera in the back and noticed that I was on international television. And I'm saying to myself, what have I done? <laughs> so in any event, a lot of things were decided. And some of them were ridiculous, like some people were asking that we have a re-election only in Palm Beach County. Of course, that was not, that was a no-brainer, and you can't have that. And, but there were some other major issues involved, and which were ultimately resolved and, and sent off to the Florida Supreme Court and later the United States Supreme Court. But the one thing that I learned from that experience, and it's, a fir it's the first time that I had an opportunity to really think about it, what I learned is that the, the, uh, the role of politicians politics and the role of the judiciary and what we're supposed to do is not a good mix, not a very good mix. The expectations are so different. The politicians don't care how you do it. They just want their guy to win. They want their candidate to win. And don't worry about the constitution. He or she will fix it. Our, the expectations of the judiciary is for us to look at the facts, look at the law, apply the law to the facts, and make a ruling and let the chips fall where they will. And that's what we're supposed to do. That was unacceptable in those days. And I was quite, actually I was quite surprised at some lawyers who were representing either one party or the other party, uh, how unreasonable they were in, in that thinking and unwilling to accept that that's what I'm supposed to do. And uh, I recall uh, a month or so afterwards that uh, someone who was, in the know in politics in Palm Beach County, told me the Democrats are so angry with you that they're looking for someone to run against you. And they said the Republicans are so angry with you that they're looking for someone to run against you. So I figured since I completely ir ir irritated both parties, I must have done something right. So the rest is history. I'm still here. Yeah, I mean, what a what a challenging uh, case that was. Um, you yeah, know, really. Uh, and that, and, you know, it's tough, right? I mean, it's really tough. Everybody has opinions and thoughts and even judges, but you have to divorce yourself from those and, and follow the law. And um, I heard you speak uh, not that long ago um, during this year I've had his presidency in Martin County, really on that subject, um, you know, and you were speaking about having to write a dissenting opinion in a matter relating to some citizenship, uh, to a citizenship issue that was very personal to you. Um, or you had to write, uh, not a dissent, you wrote a dissent, but you had, I can't remember now, I'm going to mess it up, but you had to, you had to agree and uphold the law, even though it was a personal matter, you were very uh, empathetic in, in, in understanding of the problem that was created, and hearing you tell that story was really, um, you know, interesting and dynamic, and it's a, I can only imagine the challenges that you have, all, not just you, I mean, every, every judge, uh, justice has on those issues, uh, you know, throughout their careers. And, and, and you know, that, that is the toughest part, toughest part of being a judge. Uh, uh, you're going to have to rule on something that you feel strongly personally against, but the law is what it is, and you have to follow it. In that particular case, it was a young man 
who, uh, who apparently took, uh, was an excellent student, graduate of Memphis Shoe Law School, passed the bar exam in flying colors, and couldn't get into the bar because he was not here legally. Uh, he entered, the, actually he was, he was brought to this country when he was 11 years old by his parents. And, and uh, the, uh, the Florida Senate uh, uh, passed a bill allowing him to join the bar. Sadly, that poor guy, uh, his mother was uh, afflicted with cancer in Mexico. He went there to be with her during the last few days, and he has not been able to get back in the country again. So he is now practicing law in Mexico. Now, it was a it was a it was a tough story for you, I know, but but a great recognition of you know your responsibilities and the challenges and, and how you, you rise to them as, as our judges do you know every day and so uh, you know I hope you get a chance uh, to tell it some more and some more of your and some more of your talks because I can tell you that it definitely resonated with me so um, you know before we started uh, our interview you mentioned that you were getting really familiar with Zoom and I know I've been asking this of your other colleagues Florida Supreme Court has had a couple now. I mean, I know you had a very heavy oral argument week. You've had, a, you know, you've, you've been doing your oral arguments remotely. Um, you know, how how do you feel about that? How has that been working for you? And you know, what are your thoughts on that process? Well, like like with anything new, uh, you know, you are apprehensive about doing something that you haven't done before. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm quite comfortable in the courtroom, and quite frankly, I'd rather be in the courtroom with my six colleagues sitting there next to me and, and, and looking at the lawyers and, and as they make their presentation to us. Uh, but once we started doing the Zoom, uh, I think the, the seven of us have gotten really used to it. And uh, it's, it's workable, uh, especially at the appellate level. I don't see how it's going to work with a jury trial. That, that's that, that's going to require some additional thinking. But as far as an appellate side of it, I see the DCAs are doing it and it's working out just fine. And we're doing it. Even the United States Supreme Court, they don't do video, but they do, uh, they've been doing it on, on uh, just audio. And even Justice Thomas, who rarely asks questions, is asking a lot of questions now. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's workable. And, and if we learn anything from this, John, it is that, uh, if it's a silver lining to this horrible crisis that we're in, it is that, that it, it forced us to look into technology to do a lot of things that we were not even thinking about doing before. And uh, I think you're gonna be seeing a lot more hearings done this way. Uh, you know, we've been doing telephone conference hearings for hearings that last less than 15 minutes. Uh, we've been doing that for years. And when I was a circuit judge uh, in Palm Beach County, I would hold hearings uh, with lawyers appearing in, in, in the in Panhandle of Florida and Miami and other places so they wouldn't have to drive to Palm Beach for a 15 minute hearing. We've been doing that for quite some time, but now with Zoom, where everybody can look at each other on the screen, I think we're gonna be doing a lot more and more of that. Uh, and I think that's, that's helpful, especially in the access to justice area uh, where, you know, if you're working and getting paid by the hour uh, it's devastating for you to take a half day or maybe a full day to come to the courthouse for a hearing uh, when you might be able to appear from your house in a, in a computer uh, and the judge is there and the lawyers are there and you can do it and that could be done in no time at all so there's a silver lining to this and hopefully we will learn from it and continue to do this yes yeah, so, you know i want to thank you uh and, uh, and the justices and the chief justice for, you know, being open-minded and considering the possibility of keeping some of these temporary measures in place long enough, you know, as you've alluded to, for us to really test them out a little more and make sure the ones that are working, maybe we can present some rule changes to effectuate and if some aren't working, you know, we can stop them. But I, you know, I'm glad that at least there's an openness to not rolling back to, to the pre, I guess yeah. the pre-pandemic era, I mean, it'd be nice to, to move forward, as you pointed out, and access, and just in general, um, I think it, it's, a, it's, it's something we needed to do. Uh, as you also alluded to, we all would have rather had this learning curve not be accelerated by a health pandemic, but that is probably the silver lining of this, that we did you know, advance some of these 
uh, technological issues. So, and, and I want, and, and really, I want to thank our chief, Chief Justice Kennedy, who who is a, a computer type person, unlike me, uh, and uh, he has really been been spearheading this uh, this whole business of of doing this on on Zoom on, on computers, and I think you're going to see a lot more of that from him. He's he's really into uh, you know basically bringing our, our judicial system into the, into into the future and. Uh, I think uh, you know jury trials are going to be a challenge, obviously. But in like non-jury trials, that's doable. Uh, hearings, motions, even evidentiary hearings on motions, that that's doable. Uh, but once you get the jury panel and board dire and, and and having all seven jurors in one place and, and the witnesses, that's going to be more challenging. But I'm sure that if there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. Well, we we appreciate the, all that you're doing there. So. I've been asking all of the justices, and, and so I know, you know, I know you're not caught off guard, but to share with our members something that they might be surprised to learn about you or might be interested to learn about you um, that's, that they may not already know if they don't know you. So I, I, have you, hopefully you have something for us. Well, I uh, thought about that. Uh, I've been in public office as a judge for 25 years, uh, circuit judge and my short stint at the fourth DCA and the Supreme Court, 25 years. Uh, and before that, a long time ago, in my, the beginning of my career, I was a prosecutor and, and a public defender and the rest of the time I was in private practice. And out there, I'm a different person than I am at home. Uh, when I get home, I'm truly an introvert. I, I just want to be left alone. I, I, I read my books, I read a lot. I have my old shows that I watch on TV. Uh, the only person in my neighborhood that knows that I'm on the Supreme Court of Florida is probably my next door neighbor who is a lawyer and he knows it because he's a lawyer. Uh, typically, most people just know me in my neighborhood as George. And I walk around in my shorts and my t-shirts and, and, uh, and nobody knows that I'm a justice, even when I was chief justice. Uh, and, and that's really the way I like it. So uh, I, I, uh, I'm just not a person. Uh, when I get home, uh, that despite the responsibilities that the job carries. So that's just the way I am. And I know out there, I, I'm probably talk too much and things like that. But uh, in here, I hardly say a word. Well, I know, uh, I know from personal experience that uh, you have a terrific sense of humor. You can tell great jokes. You have a story for everything. Um, so uh, I appreciate you remembering that this is a family uh, Family entertainment, so uh, we didn't go too far afield in, in any in anything interesting about you. But I know that, that you're a great. Uh, I can tell you, if anybody wanted to sit down with the justice of the Florida Supreme Court and have dinner and be entertained, I, I would nominate you. It's uh, it's always fun. So um, I want to thank you on behalf, really, of 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 bar leadership, of myself. I mean, you've done a lot for me personally. I want to thank you, uh, you know, for all that the court and you do just to make the bar better. Uh, you know, we keep, uh, you know, we keep trying and you all are always engaged and always helpful despite your extremely busy schedules, including doing um, activities such as these interviews. So I want to just personally thank you and thank you on behalf of the bar. And as the senior ranking person on this, on this interview, you get the last word. So if, if you have any closing remarks, uh, Justice LaBarga, I'll turn it over to you. I, I just, I want to thank the bar for, uh, at least throughout my entire career as a lawyer for what the bar has done and what the bar is doing to promote our, our profession. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think I, you guys do a, a terrific job. And I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry that we're not going to be able to have a Florida Bar Convention this year because that typically when I really enjoy being around and seeing friends from all over the state and sometimes the country come and get together for a few days and, and have meetings and talk and and reminisce about things. I really am sad that we're not going to have it this year. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a greater winter convention, uh, and then maybe next year in, in Boca. Uh, but uh, I, the bar has been a tremendous part of my life. Uh, uh, Josh, the New York State of the Director, is doing a terrific job. Uh, big shoes to, uh, to fill uh, from Jack Harkness, but he has done it quite well. And uh, so he is doing a great job. And uh, I'm looking forward to whatever time I have left on the court. 
you know, I'm, I'm no spring chicken anymore. Uh, whatever time I have left, I'm, I'm looking forward to spending it with the bar members and, and, and bar. Well, thanks uh, for the kind words. Uh, thank you again for, for taking the time and uh, thank you for joining us, Justice Labarga, for, uh, for this virtual annual convention. And, and I agree, while we, I think this is gonna be a tremendous success, we are all looking forward to going back to a live event and you know, probably incorporating some, some virtual events you know, forever going forward, but uh, we definitely look forward to, to going back to live. And, and we're also, you hit the nail on the head, we're optimistic that a winter meeting, uh, we may be able to, to beef it up a little bit, have a little convention light to, to make up for this one. So thanks for your time again. Thanks for all you do and look forward to seeing you soon. Right. Take care.